Welcome back to Beards and Brews. Hey, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe or follow no matter where you're listening. Not only does it help us out, but you'll know exactly when we have another one brewing. Gentlemen, we're back with our spooktacular nonsense. This week, we're going to talk about Zombievers. What'd you think? I love this shit. Like, just the bullshit that we were treated to from start to finish. The nonsense gore and some of the dumbest yet funny lines that get said in the best way. Um, yeah, so if you're going into a movie that is called Zombievers, if you are willing to watch a movie titled Zombievers, you're probably going to have a, at least an okay time with this. You'll get through it. There's some really funny scenes. Well, if you're like me and you go into a movie like Zombievers expecting some Oscar-worthy performances and some stellar effects, then boy, was I disappointed. Yeah. I mean, these yeah. are top-quality Muppets. They get chopped in half. <laughs> you can see the fur falling out. Come on. These are absolutely hand puppets for the most part. Like anytime there's like actual, you know, person on beaver action, that beaver is in someone that beaver is on someone's fist. I come on, like I totally love movies that take the piss, right? But like this one's like taking a piss on me. I feel like it fucking hates me and everybody who watches it. It feels like the kind of movie that's made in the style of, like, that cheesy, campy horror, but, like, it's just like, yeah, we know you like this stuff, fuck you for loving it. That kind of attitude. It's like, all right, man, I guess he's got his dick bit off now. I was really hoping that he'd get legitimately chewn. Is chewing a word? Honestly, fuck kind of every person in this movie, right? I mean, yeah, see, I know the movie is trying really hard and being edgy as fuck, and just patting itself on the shoulder with all the fuck it can get across. But man, nobody is likable in this movie. Like, not even in, like, the throwaway way. You know who's likable is actually the first two people we come across. This movie opens with a scene of two drivers of, like, a medical research company or something. They're just bullshitting in a truck, and it's Bill Burr and John fucking Mayer. Did you guys know John Mayer is in this? I did not. I thought you were joking, as in, you know, that's not John Mayer. Ha ha ha, but it looks like John Mayer. But now that I've went back and looked, it's John Mayer in that most dubious of disguises, a fake mustache. Yeah. He looks like, uh... He looks like shit. <laughs> no, what, what, what's the... Well... He looks like Jim Halpert from The Office when, uh, when they take that trip to the other company to, like, infiltrate or whatever. I don't remember what the plot line was for that episode, but he's dressed up with, like, a mustache and, like, a wig or something like that. He looks just like that, except it's John Mayer. Well, to me, he definitely looks like the kind of guy who just showed up like that on set and they just weren't going to say anything to John Mayer. Look at this fucking guy and his mustache. Yeah, get over here, John Mayer. I'm going to chew some gum and talk on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> the dialogue these guys spit back and forth is maybe one of the best parts of this movie. I don't remember much of it, but it was funny the whole way through. It's certainly my favorite part because it seems so far removed from everything else. Like, it's just Bill Burr wrote this whole scene and this book ended version on the other half of the movie. But there's something about the chemistry between... John Mayer trying to be Willie Nelson and Bill Burr on an old Nokia phone. There's just something there. Yeah, this movie's from 2014, and he is using 2003 technology just for the sake of, I don't know, a plot point or something. I don't know. It's so that he can be staring at it so, so hard, trying to touch the, you know, five button three times just to get to the K. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, you see that deer up there? Yeah, I see it. I don't think that you do. Splat! Yeah, the deer is straight out of RoboCop. Just pops like a water balloon. It, it's pretty just insane. A thing of toxic waste goes flying out, you know, to set up the whole plot of the Zombievers, much like most zombie films would. And Bill Burr's immediate response is, hey, check the back. And the guy goes, the back's fine. I'm going to check the front. And he goes and he looks at this fucking just demolished like if someone took a bucket of red paint and just threw it on the front of the car is what's left no absolutely just ran into a spaghetti stand and now it's an issue <laughs> yeah, he's not gonna make it and they just keep on keeping on and we're treated to uh much like what is that lord of war where we follow the bullet from this time of its you know stamping to the time that it's got you know it eventually ends up in some blood diamond aka and kills someone 
we get that same journey, but with a canister down a scenic river route as it finally busts open and sprays green goop all over these lovely hand puppet beavers that remind me very much so of the, uh, if you guys remember Full House, whenever yes, uh, Uncle, yes, Uncle Joey right, would right. pull out his little woodchuck puppet. It's what? I, I wish they would have leaned into that just once. Like one of the one of the stupid boys be like, "Is it made of wood?" Because that's what I've got in my pants, or something like that. I don't know. I mean, that sounds great and all, but this entire time I'm thinking, "Oh, the secret of the ooze is just John Mayer trying to be Willie Nelson." That was it. This could also be Alex Mack. We really don't know where this is going. Jump forward. We got three college girls just going up to a cabin in the woods or something just to have a good time. Totally not to have an orgy or anything. Safe. The orgy. It is kind of ominous when you hear that, just like that thump, thump, thump of the beaver tail, you know, right? I feel like there's like a missing movie in the middle between this one, mated with like teeth or something. Ooh. I mean, that that does kind of happen. We, spoilers, you get were beavers, and they're pretty goddamn fun. Yeah? Is that is that what we're calling it? A, a were beaver? I mean, sure, what else why not? can you call it? Well, I know there's one thing you can't call fun. That's our three main leads. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. All right, so what are you guys calling these girls <laughs> to differentiate them? Uh, okay. I have glasses, Wait. boobs, and blonde. I had country girl with C-U-N-T-R-Y because she was very rude. And then you had Belma and last girl. And this day, and... So the girl that you call last girl isn't the last girl? Correct. Who I'm calling blonde, is that right? Okay. Correct. I totally forgot every character's name in this movie, except for the Beavers. I'm having a real hard time. I've got Bob Vance from Vance Refrigeration, because he's uh, who knocks on the door of that public restroom is like, Hey, I gotta take a shit. Yeah, that that, that guy's from The Office. Nice. Me and Eric only recall one actual guy, and that's Trope Hunter himself, Smith with a Y. Yeah, oh, you mean Rex guy? Lynn? He just rolls yep. up for no reason. He's like, hey, remember me? I was in CSI and stuff. Hey, I've got this gun. It's going to come in handy at some point, right? It's like, uh, what, Schrodinger's or Smessinger's or whatever. Chekhov. Chekhov. That's what they call it. Chekhov. <laughs> Dirty. Well like, well, like how I mentioned earlier, like how these three main leads are kind of like awful to listen to. Like, they're all kind of annoying. I get it. This movie's trying to be edgy and stuff. But having Rex Lynn in the movie is kind of like a comic reset because he just comes in and is like, yeah, I don't like your bullshit. You got tits. I believe it. Get out. You got tits. You should put them away. This is a good Christian family neighborhood. There's only three of us, but we are good Christians. Those three people are just him, his brother Daryl, and his other brother Daryl. I understood that reference. My favorite bit that they keep like alluding to is there's beavers. Of course, uh, these girls are staying at that you know little cabin next to the, the. It's a fucking pond. Number one, they're staying next to that to to deal with breakups, and they keep talking about it being a lake. And they'll show you like wide shots of the lake, but then every time that the pond is involved, you can see the start and finish of said lake, which is just like a stone's throw big. Yeah, honestly, yeah. like I don't mind swimming in a lake. Swimming in a lake is nice. Swimming in something like this would be, I feel like it'd be real scummy, you know? Yeah, it smells weird and it's definitely left over from like a hard rain, not a lake. Mm. Like, you probably got, like, a bunch of cattails over there somewhere. Like, what you're stepping on isn't, like, sand and rocks. It's more like just beaver poop. Imagine going to this place, taking your top off, and just immediately surrounded by mosquitoes. Oh, that's why her breast got yeah, bigger in the movie. More and more, more mosquito bites. <laughs> they just all formed into one. <laughs> yeah, so we get there, and <laughs> just the uniboob. <laughs> Yeah, we get there, and and the one girl, uh, I call her boobs for obvious reasons, she just straight up, just like, all right, I'm taking my top off, and this is just how I'm going to be for the rest of the time. You know, I might might cover them up when there's somebody around, but, like, I'm just I'm just running around topless just because I know I'm in a horror movie. Yeah, she knew exactly how much time she had on screen to be topless, and after that, have the break. It really felt like they were all going to go that direction, and then they just didn't. I don't know. Kind of, kind of disappointed in you, you glasses girl. Uh, I really am. Well, hey, hey, hey. She's a Christian woman, so she has sex with her underpants on. Okay. I need to look some things up real quick. <laughs> I, I know. I have, I have heard about Mormons having um, special underwear that they wear. I don't know a whole lot about it. If you're Mormon, let us know down in the comments. 
No Mormons are saying? listening to this. Absolutely not. Like, I'm thinking maybe magnets are involved, but how do those work? Who knows? <laughs> Mormon <laughs> Juggalo. <laughs> yes. Mormon no, Juggalo they, fan base. <laughs> they do exist. Both of them. They, they you know. <laughs> both of them. <laughs> They're not even the same person. There's a very small overlap. Yeah. He's got a friend that, like, he calls a juggalo, but the friend's like, nah, not really. Like, the, you know, Great Malenko had some all right stuff on it, but I'm not into Fago. You know, woo, woo, nah. <laughs> nah. nah. <laughs> yeah, uh, believe it or not, uh, the Amish and Mormons, not the same people. Yeah, they're pretty far apart. But then again, you really forget Ohio is. Man, Ohio is fucking wide. You know what else is why I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> it's just whatever, just a long tangent to nowhere. I'll tell you what's wide. Those fucking shots they like to t- take with old girl whenever she's walking. All right, so Blondie, she will show under cheek. She's got shorty shorts for the booty. That's her selling point. We have glasses, and she's the cute dorky one. Glasses is cute and dorky, which would be, you know, exactly my thing. But God, she's got awful taste in music. Were you listening to this shit? That, that not really that's like, no music. it's like baby's first dubstep it's just it, computer turning on 2009 yeah it's it's what plays if you have like one of those fisher price toys but it's set for like millennial children um and there's just a dubstep button it's like do 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 well you know what the girls are not alone they run into rex lynn looking at that beaver dam they're like ah, oh, that's all gross and stuff with the goop all over it hope nothing comes of that they're Probably naked nothing. and whatnot and then in the middle of the day, they're like, hey, all the guys are here, because you know what? We need some penis. Yeah, it's supposed yeah. to be like this whole, you know, weekend away from the guys, you know, getting getting that one boyfriend who cheated on you off your mind. We're just going to have fun up in the cabin all by ourselves, girls night. Oh, who invited the boyfriends? Well, for most of the movie, I felt that they were either a Josh or a Zach or something in between. Oh, yeah. Maybe a Cody. Yeah. Kyle So one I've got. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've got guy with a beanie who's absolutely the douchiest, I, at least the most outwardly douchey. He's also the funniest. Uh, there's like the generic sort of, I guess, pretty boy. I don't know. He's nothing. And then there's the guy who's the cheater. He cheated on blonde girl. He's always sad looking. And man, he is low key the douchiest one of them all. Well, yeah, 100 percent. But like the rest of the movie, they just put him there for like the little bit of I, I don't know, that little bit of, like, cynical ha-ha. To, you know, like, like, this guy is totally a shit bird, and he's going to get his comeuppance. But you know what? You're going to have to suffer with me for the next half an hour. Yeah, you're right. Like, the one, the beanie guy, he never takes off that beanie. Even when he is in the lake swimming, you know, they're having a good time before the beavers show up. He has a beanie on. That's going to get wet, my dude. Team Zizu, you don't take that off. Oh, he sees, like, a really big mess with, like, a, a beaver that mutilated somebody. Instead of, like, telling someone, he takes that long, hard walk on the boat, smokes a joint, comes back. <laughs> I yep. could see it. Now, this is the time, once everybody done fucking, and we get treated to our first encounter with the beaver. The chick, not her beaver, but a beaver. And she goes to take a shower, and guess what's in there? beaver hand puppet and it says world yeah this is where it really starts but i don't (laughs) want to ignore the sex line that comes out of this uh i think it's the beanie boy's mouth you know he's behind her they're doing stuff and he's just rattling off funny one-liners or whatever and he throws out oh i feel like a power ranger what does that (laughs) fucking mean it's a thing, right? So you either have like a mirror next to your bed so you can look at yourself, or you just have that still frame from American Psycho. You know, this is the same energy. Yeah, it's morphin' yes. time! Get it! Anyway, yeah, now, so the beavers show up. Yeah. <laughs> you say that you say that nonchalantly, but that's kind of like how the movie handles it. It's all, oh, hey, by the way, and they're just chewing on shit. Yeah, and these aren't normal beavers either. These are uh, Zom beavers, so they're aggressive, they're nocturnal, they're real fucking horny. Oh, no, those are the kids. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yes. the kids are the blood hunt horny ones. 100%. They have to, of course, kill the beaver, because what else are you going to do with it? And old boy comes in there, and he's like, I got this. Stop being a little bitch. And as he steps in, the beaver isn't there. It has somehow crawled under the bathroom sink and shut the door. That way, as he steps in, it can burst out like a gremlin and flop onto the floor 
with just as enough of its, I'd say, last third of its body still not being in frame so the man's arm can wiggle it not up and down in a vicious attacking motion but side to side like a thrashing gator as the man throws himself on the floor in fear oh by the way this guy uh this was when he walked in with a baseball bat right he has never in his life swung a baseball bat i can tell by the grip i can tell what by the way he was holding it dude did not play little league (laughs) swing away (laughs) and he does i don't understand that reference but okay (laughs) <laughs> technically everybody had sex so there were three beavers smashed this guy doubles up and smashes a second beaver now nah, the uh the blonde girl and her boyfriend they didn't right because he cheated on her and they're you know having a little conversation or trying to have like a conversation neither one of them's ha- it's awkward it's awkward fuck it then he got to smash a beaver too everybody gets it's a point. Spider-Man rolls up. Everybody gets one. It goes away. Yep. Well, he did before the, you know, pre-canonical, uh, you know, he smashed Glasses Girl because that's who he cheated on his girlfriend with. We find that out here in a little bit. Drama. Oh, shit. Speaking of shit, that fella has to ask, did you shit in here? <laughs> What? Of course. Just, just forgot where we were. Yeah. Yeah, that's how the movie's like transition scene. It's like, oh man, this crazy traumatic event. Take a shit. Yeah. <laughs> Be honest. Did you shit in here? <laughs> oh, so man. we move on from there to the next day when this is when they actually go out swimming and stuff, right? Correct. They go there and start hobnobbing around, doing all sorts of stuff that you would see in your typical teenager going to get killed movie. Uh, also, there's a bear, uh, which. This is a brown bear. I'm pretty sure this is not um, native to Indiana. Uh, if there's any... I don't know where I'm going with that. It's not native to Indiana. Well, for a moment, it's like, oh, it's a cocaine bear. They're going to do some cocaine business now. They'll just be cocaine zombievers. Uh, we need a crossover. We need a crossover. Oh, because if you've seen Cocaine Bear, or at least know the story of the real Cocaine Bear, it is dead. This is ripe ripe for the picking zombie cocaine bear yeah 100 percent uh he's in a what a, a museum in kentucky or something that's not far from indiana let one of these little beavers waddle over the, I, oh even better did did you guys watch the post-credit scene was there a post-credit scene there was a post-credit scene uh that Damn. would allude to uh a sequel we'll get to it we'll get to it if you guys didn't watch it i'll let you know well, I mean, I as long as Ray Liotta's in there getting his guts eaten out, I'm totally cool with it. He could come back as a zombie, too. Ah? Mm, zombie Ray Liotta. <laughs> but a real one. Yeah, like a real, real zombie. All right, so this is where we meet uh, old Hunter guy, right? He scares away the the bear uh, who's just chilling at the lake. I don't know. Yeah. It, it wasn't even like any ever. He's like, no, 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 get out of here. huh? By the yeah. way, I'm going to lecture you. Let me tell you something, me and my grandpa, we grew up down here. Down here, you'll go on and put them titties up. Grizzly bear attracted the titties. <laughs> Home and what you make it. <laughs> well, you heard him. That bear likes to see homos naked. Let's get out of here. 100%. <laughs> Shit, I forgot. This is the scene where that asshole throws the dog. There's a dog, by the way. Cute little fucker. Throws the dog into the water to get... Is this the scene? Yeah. 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 Yep. The yeah, it is. asshole guy throws the little pup dog into the water to get eaten by these beavers. All right. That guy. Be con- Fuck that guy. This is going to be contentious because I'm also team dog, but Brady, you have a different angle. Let me hear it. Goddamn right I do. I know. I know. Everyone's like, oh, the dog is a baby, baby, baby. Look, I love my dog. <laughs> if I am stuck on a floating platform about to be eaten alive I, and, and the only people on that platform is me my wife my kid and my dog i'm giving him up you know no nah, like, throw beanie kid in there as a distraction and swim away there you go they, yep. see that's it that's where you have it because you have to be as sleazy as possible because the thought process has to go is if i toss the dog in there i might be a bad guy but if i toss beanie footless man in there i probably got a shot at his chick Honestly, like, at minimum, just to cause a distraction, just throw the foot back in. Oh, yeah, Beaver's chewed through his foot. Uh, We forgot to mention that. So he's just carrying around a foot. And he's doing that for the rest of the movie, so strap in. Their attacks are like buzzsaws, I guess, because, you know, beavers eat through trees. 
over the course of many hours and days, perhaps weeks. But whenever they attack you, it's just like nom 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 at the joint, and it just comes right off. They're like piranha beavers. Ooh, well, it's, you know, it, you have those pressure points. You gnaw on one thing, and a limb pops off. It's fine. Medical. It, Don't worry. It, science. It happens. You know. This is one of the best bits because uh, Chandler, your your old man buddy, is getting his his debut for just two seconds. I know it's just two seconds, but they're an amazing two seconds. Is there that is. Yay? There's screaming. There's murder. There's violence and fear. The camera pans over to their neighbors who will say live just across the lake. And yeah. the woman says, sweetheart, I hear screaming and uh, tires peeling out. It sounds like something might be going on. The old man delivers one of the best lines. I fucking I just loved it. And if Chandler, you could deliver it for me, I would be forever grateful. Oh, it's just those kids scissoring each other to Lady Gaga. <laughs> Well, yes. you know. someone wrote that down. By the way, you say old man. This is a legitimate actor. This is Brent Briscoe. He's got a pretty deep filmography to be in a movie called Beavers. This guy is The Green Mile and Mulholland Drive. He was in Sling Blade. He was in The Dark Knight. I know him best from playing JJ of JJ's Diner in Parks and Rec. This guy is all over the place. And also in Zombieaver is giving the same conviction as Officer Mooney from Killer Clowns, which I'll bring up again because it's a staple now. Uh, every horror movie needs one of those. Just like, eh, it's all right. It's just the kid scissoring again. You're welcome. <laughs> we are treated to some pretty cool shots coming up, though, once the Zombieavers start to pop off. Uh, night falls. These uh, Zombieavers are sitting outside and they're all thudding their tails against the ground in unison. And it's pretty fucking creepy we get a shot in the dark not the aussie song but a shot in the dark of these zombies sitting out there in the moonlight reflecting off their eyes which is super cool so it's all these little glowing marbles out there i thought that was a neat touch yeah anytime they showed those beavers and they especially like the thumping of the tails it was like a a pretty ominous feeling it was like oh these things are actually like kind of scary well the movie does try you know on its horror tropes right about now because you got like footloose over there and he's having a hard time they drag his ab and and they try to formulate this like escape plan but for some reason being tropey as hell they're just like well let's do the kind of stupidest thing we can possibly think of we should split up immediately it's like the fucking uh mystery team (laughs) fred's like you go here and i'll fuck daphne over here have either of you been like close up on a beaver? Well, I never kiss and tell. <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you, they're fucking huge. They are way bigger than these little puppets in this movie. Like, if a real beaver was a zombie beaver, those cabins would be fucked. That's all going down. I bet if the budget allowed it, they would have some sort of scene where the entire house all dust. Oh, yeah. Dude, that would be solid, but the best the best they could offer with the budget they had was uh, barricading the windows with wood and then having one of these zombievers easily chomp right through it. And then the, you know, blonde female chastises the guy who put up the barricade. She's like, what the hell? You got to do a better job. He goes, well, sorry, all I got to work with is wood. Well, good thing he had plenty of practice playing Call of Duty zombies because that's what you need. Yep. Ten points for each fucking board that comes up there. Oh, no, zombies, not beavers. I don't know why I was thinking that there was a Call of Duty with beavers. There is now. Zombievers. I, yeah. Yeah, we, we got to do Shit, it. round five, zombievers, and they just bite your dick off. <laughs> uh, we're getting to that part. You were talking about the tropes of the escape. They have them in the car. They're getting away. X things happen because the beavers, of course, they're so dumb, they're smart. They block the road by felling trees. Uh, the fellow, you know, Mr. Jock guy ends up getting some guns and he wants to make a getaway and instead he gets timbered. They drop a fucking tree and kill him, Dunzo, out of the movie. And at this point, all hope seems to be lost. The hunter shows up to save the day and we are treated to yet another rousing scene of great lines and uncomfortableness, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, Mr. Red Beanie guy is riding with his girlfriend and, uh, Mr fucking cliffhanger himself and i lost it he's 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 got a fever and the guy goes maybe it's beaver fever and she goes oh my god really and he goes baby baby i'm so sorry i never ate your pussy 
one of these days I'm going to go back and I'm going to eat all of it. <laughs> it's just, it smells so bad. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Like, you know, just damn, dude. He's been, he's been losing a lot of blood. He doesn't know what he's saying. Oh, yeah, he is a foot shorter. Oh. Damn. But I do love Rex Lynn. In whatever scene he is, his almost deadpan conviction, which sounds like an oxymoron, mm-hmm. is just so refreshing because everybody's really laying on the cheese, for better or worse, and he's just like, yeah, it's probably zombie varietals or something. Get it checked. We gotta get out of here. Like, it just whatever. <laughs> it's fucking, it doesn't matter. Gotta, yeah. I gotta cauterize your wound. Done. No. Okay. You have seen it on television. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we want to talk about his delivery of lines. He gets some of the best bits. Like he explains beaver fever being Jardia. And she goes, oh my God, do you think that's what it is? He goes, well, one of the signs is diarrhea. You got diarrhea? And she says, nope. And he goes, well, then it ain't Jardia. And that's the end of the conversation there. <laughs> and my favorite piece of the entire movie is just the way that he walks in uh, to the neighbors who have now been eaten by the beavers. Oh, shocker. And they open the door. Well, he opens a door. And there's this maimed corpse of an old lady. He sees it. The camera pans to him, standing in the doorway with the door open. Zero expression. Pans back to mangled body. Pans back to him, standing there. Zero expression. Nope. <laughs> Just shuts the door. Did you guys watch the outtakes? No. No, there, no, there, no. Were, a few, <laughs> there were a few lines he threw out there. And uh, the one I really liked was, opens the door. Well, that's fucked up closes the door <laughs> <laughs> that seems pretty sincere to be honest you know like they didn't show him what the effect was and he just looks like a goddamn and leaves that's perfect yeah they should have picked that one yeah audience out there if you ever watch this movie and i do recommend it spoiler alert watch the outtakes too because there's some pretty good lines in there some pretty good visuals too like uh, earlier when they tossed the dog into the pond and he's supposed to be afraid of these beavers because they're trying to kill him obviously he's just like trying to make friends with him. He's just like okay, doggy paddling over there and it's like, huh. So next we get like a nice run and gun escape scene where they're running through an open field because, you know, they're being chased. And you get basically a beaver hunt. But it's like the kangaroo bit from Crocodile Dundee where these puppets are being thrown up into the air and being <laughs> shot. And it's just beautiful bits of people being eaten alive by beavers. Speaking of eating beavers, whatever you said, I don't know. I've got a beer here today from Belching Beaver Brewery out of Oceanside, California. This is Hazer's Gonna Haze, a hazy IPA, 6.6% alcohol by volume. It is strong, resinous, piney. We got wood. It's a, like, it's a solid traditional West Coast style IPA. It's, it's honestly really good, though. I'll take it all day long. Beavers would love that beer because they like oh, to yeah. chew on shit, trees and twigs and branches mostly but not to mention one of the fellas penis because that's what happened oh yeah <laughs> i don't know how we skip past that part there is a scene where like all right all hell is breaking loose now beavers are trying to get in you know they boarded up the the windows and everything they retreat into the the two people that are left now at the cabin which is glasses girl and the guy that cheated on his girlfriend with her and uh yeah they retreat to the bathroom and it's like well i don't suddenly i'm horny again uh what should we do it's the murder bone and get rid of it there's only one way you wind up dead but there's only one way (laughs) yeah it's not gonna matter but you know you should do it anyway a hundred percent there's suddenly a thumping on the floor what could it be it's a fucking zombiever were beaver their beaver their castle oh, totally like the the where zombiever just starts rolling in and i'm just like this is it this is what the movies trained me to want this entire time and he chomps that man's dick off but not not in a way where it's like ha ha chomp it's kind of like grab and a rip and it just looks like he just cleaned out your sink with one of those roto rooters oh like, damn that long whose hair is that the previous owner oh <laughs> <laughs> These fucking were beavers, since we just brushed over them, you get like a cool American werewolf in London transformation where everyone's growing big beaver teeth and tails and thumping them on the grounds. We even get a grizzly beaver, which I thought was kind of cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, the big boys. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. I thought the movie was actually going to end on like a an escalated note when I saw those. Yeah, I kind of thought that like the zombie beaver bear uh, would 
kind of fight off the beavers. I thought there would be like a showdown or something like that. And then maybe at the end, the final girl gives like a thanks to the to the zombie beaver bear. But that didn't happen, unfortunately. <laughs> Dap it up. No, that'd be great. Like the uh, the final girl just walks and just like gives like a solid thumbs up. Freeze frame. Yeah. Credits roll. Insert Kenny Loggins song. Whatever. Uh, by the way, do you guys know? I don't remember the zombie for bear making any noise or uh like having any lines do you guys know who was credited as doing the voice for zombie for bear morgan freeman you're not that far off no you're very far off it's the backstreet boys <laughs> oh yeah that's right they're in the cast list and through the entire time i'm just like where yeah where beaver bear oh good time <laughs> now all this escalates into madness crazy shit's going on but i do want to take oh, now, one step. now it escalates into madness now is when it escalates into madness. yes Thanks. whenever she's got a killer friend says fuck that bitch never liked her anyways but there's a truck stunt and i thought that was fucking nuts they literally drive a truck through the set or the house or whatever the fuck it is right into the living room and the other last girl velma is in there and whenever that truck smashes in whoever that stunt woman is that looks horrifying because that truck fucking smashes in there. You know, this is one take. And that lady, she's trying to stumble out of the way. She falls, and whatever she falls on, she slides almost under the front wheel of the truck. It's wild looking. It's one of those moments where, like, damn, she died in Zombievers. <laughs> Shit. They had the exact same safety officer as that Alec Baldwin movie. <laughs> oh, shit. Who loaded that truck with ammunition? God damn. Why does that zombie beaver bear have a rifle? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Shit pops off. Yeah. I have a good time with these types of movies. There's violence. There's titties. There's dumb monsters. There's funny lines. I like it. There's nothing more else to say. Eventually, shit happens. The final girl gets away. That's uh, And then we get one last scene with John Mayer and Bill Burr just to kind of close things up. That's, that's the whole movie yeah. in a nutshell right there, right? Yeah, it's just the, the whole movie's on Bill Burr's imagination. Because if you watch both the beginning and the end, the deer is more of a metaphor for the woman he murders later on. I think the deer is the metaphor for the handle of Jägermeister that Bill Burr was drinking while he was driving. Eh, it's not his fault. Yeah. Texting's hard. Yeah. Eric, I really like your interpretation that, you know... That's his delusion that he murdered a woman. He's like, no, nah, it was a deer. And good God, thank, thank God we did kill her if it was a woman because she was infected with Jardia. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. And like he, his alibi is like, Mr. Burr, where were you? Well, I was on my fucking shift with my buddy, John Mayer. Yeah, I didn't hit nothing. It was a water balloon filled with grape pudding. Sir, grape pudding? Yeah, it was grape pudding. It was red. I d- doesn't matter. Gravity. <laughs> Just <laughs> oh, but before we get too far into the final thoughts, I want to tell you about this post credit scene that neither one of you saw. All right, everything is over. All that you see is like a dead zombie beaver or zombie beaver bear. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Okay. But you've got you've got a little a little honeybee just flying around it then you see it return up to its uh what a swarm nest hive. That's the word up to its beehive to bring the zombie disease or whatever up to the zombies. Oh, oh, shit. Now that's what I call a stinger. Look out, yeah. Macaulay Culkin. Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> he needs his glasses. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought you were going home alone and you went, my girl, I appreciate that. Just sad dance. Boom, 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 boom. Yep. Uh, for me, I didn't enjoy it that much. It felt kind of lazy in a not so good way. It felt kind of cynical, almost like they just threw all this together just for a product. They didn't really elevate. I, I, I've been saying that a lot lately, but there's just nothing there. There's like a thousand movies like this. It, this there's just nothing special here. There's a couple of things that had me chuckle. Bill Burr, just because Bill Burr is Bill Burr, and he'll put you through a fucking wall. Other than that, it's just not for me, unfortunately. Like, this is not a good movie. Let's make no delusions about it. There are beaver zombie puppets that you can clearly see your puppets. So we're not talking about high art here. But I had a good time. There's a lot of funny scenes. There's a couple of scenes that are legitimately like, oh, man, that's kind of terrifying, isn't it? Overall, like, it's an hour and 17 minutes. Fuck around and find out. 
Okay, well, there you have it. That was Zombievers. If you have any strong feelings about the movie or the show, leave it in the comments sections below. Make sure you hit the like and the subscribe buttons. Be sure to bash that little bell icon down there so you don't miss what we have brewing up next. Get out there and follow us on our social medias. We got all that schniz. You can find us anywhere <laughs> podcasts are available. Give us a listen. Sometimes we're funny. You know, worst case scenario, we end up all having to have a safety orgy and chewing on some wood. Boner joke.